Hello all, um, today I would like to show you some interesting technique using Grasshopper C Sharp scripting. Uh, it's about how you can auto-generate the component network through a C Sharp component. So let me show you some examples. So here's some C Sharp component and if I toggle this to true, the new component network will appear and if I change these sliders as a random seed, you can randomly create the component network. Sometimes it has boundary surface component attached to the network, sometimes not. And each time you change the seed, the value here uh, of the segments input for the polygon will change its value in so you can see that the side of the polygon is changing depending on the C value. Also, you can also save this uh, component network as a grasshopper file by clicking this button as an external file. And s let's say I want to save this as a sample.gh. And then I, if I open it, The component you have just created through a C sharp being saved as a uh, external file, a single different file. So that's what I want to show you how you can do this through a C sharp component. Okay, so let's start doing it. First of all, yeah, let's just have a C sharp component. And let's have some um, input values here. Uh, first of all, let's create a Boolean input called update so that whenever you have an update being true, uh, the new component will be created. And if it's false, then the component will be disappeared or cleared out. So as a type hint, I'll select the bool and another variable or input. What I want that I want to have is a random seed value so that I, you can change this to randomly create some random network using random values and random components. Okay, so I have set it to an integer here. And finally, I will make a save input, type in as a boolean so that if I, uh, if the true value being sent to this save input, then the file be file that has just been created, the node network, the component network will be saved as a graspable file, external graspable file. Okay, let's attach some inputs. For the update, I'll attach the toggle. For the seed, I'll attach some sliders for the integers. Okay, and for the save, I'll attach the button. And for output A, I will attach a geometry parameter. Okay. So this will be the basic uh, setup for the C Ship component. And also in order to create the components like these uh, default components or the components from plugins, what you have to do is to you have to load a assembly, which is a GHA file to this uh, C Ship component so that you can uh, externally call the component classes uh, through a C ship coding. So for example, if you want to have like this surface components, the list of surface components, then you have to have a GHA file being attached, being referenced by this C ship component. And in order to do that, first of all, you have to 
uh, find where the GHA file is being stored. And for the default components, which have been, uh, which is for the Rhino 6 Grasshopper file, Grasshopper, uh, you can find it under the C drive, program files, Rhino 6, plugins, Grasshopper components. And there are a bunch of GHA files which uh, contains uh, the default components for the Grasshopper, such as vectors, math, script, surface, and so on. Okay, let's go back. And in order to apply an assembly or make a reference assemblies, you right click this C ship component and click this manage assemblies and then click this add button and go to this directly I'll just copy this path go back to the Rhino paste it here and right now as a default it only shows DLL but what I want to have is the GHA file so I'm gonna just show all files and Let's select all the necessary components. I'll just select all the GHA file for convenience. Though I'm just going to use some of it in the C -sharp script, but just to make sure that I have everything, I'll just select every GHA file and click open. And all the GHA file be uh, referenced, added as a reference. Okay, click OK. Now um, you can start writing some coding in order to auto generate a component, component network. So double click the C ship component and let's start writing. Let's start by creating a single component such as sliders. Okay, so in order to do that, it's uh, it's a bit, uh, it's a lot of coding, but I'll show you how. Okay, first of all, in order to access the sliders, the slider itself, it is not contained inside a GHA file, but it's inside the Grasshopper DLL, so you can, you don't have to add any assemblies in order to create a sliders. Uh, in order to create a component instance what you have to do is to write like this grasshopper dot kernel dot special dot gh number sliders and the number slider itself is not a gh component but it is actually a parameter of numbers gh numbers so it's a bit different compared to the other component like um, circle, rectangle, extrude, or some, so on. So be careful about that. The slider itself, this class itself is a parameter which can be acted as a output or input. I'll tell you. I'll tell you the difference later. Okay, so for the sliders, first thing you want to do is to set the position of the sliders inside the canvas. So, in order to change the position, you first you have to create an attributes like this. So sliders dot create attributes, and then in order to change the position, you uh, set the pivot inside the attributes using a point f class so it's inside a system dot drawing dot point f and let's say i want to set the position of the sliders to 100 100 it's x and y and for the sliders since this is a special input you have to set some values in order to actually use it so first thing is the minimum value the second the maximum and the third the actual value 
the actual slider value. So in order to change the minimum value, you access this access this classes instance at classes properties called slider. There's slider property inside this gh number slider class. And inside this slider there is a value called minimum and you can just overwrite this using a decimal numbers and I'm just gonna use zero for the minimum and slider maximum there's also a slider maximum and you also have to set it as a decimal I'm just gonna set it to 100.0 and finally you have to set a slider value itself uh, initial slider value and this one also has to be a decimal so i'm gonna set it to 15.0 right now after you have created after you have set it this number slider properties what you have to do is to add this component uh, virtual component inside a grasshopper document so in order to do that you ha you can create uh, you write like this grasshopper document so this is a actual current document that you're seeing in here this one this it this one this canvas itself is a grasshopper document and in order to add this component inside of this grasshopper document, you write grasshopper document dot add object and say slider and you have to set some second parameter whether you need an update or not. I'll just say false. And Probably that's it for the initial setup. Let's try out. Let's move this up, move this component up a little bit. Okay, and also let's write a condition say if an update is true, then create a slider component. All right. Let's try this out. Okay, so see if there's any errors. Okay, do I do have any, I do have some errors here. Let's check. Okay, I was missing a new word here. Okay, now let's try again. Um, first play this to check if there's any errors. Okay, so it seems there's no errors. Okay, so let's close this first and double click this toggle to turn it on and a new slider appears. So it succeeded and the minimum is zero and maximum is 100. So the first uh, prompt, the first component, you have just created first component, it is a sliders and what you want to do is to create like several components and connect it together with the wires like this. So let's try doing that. And also you want to delete these created components when I turn off this toggle. And also create some random values or create some random uh, component network using this seed. Right now I'm just creating a single constant slider so that's not interesting enough so let's try those by, by setting up some uh, conditions. Okay, first thing let's create some random uh, classes, the instance of random class by calling it new random uh, with a seed 
input so that by changing the seed you can have uh, different numbers from the random value okay now the first thing the first place to use this random I would like to change this value 50.0 so the initial value I want to set and set it as a random value so I'll set it like rand next double since the next double is a float number from 0 to 1 or no not the float the double number from 0 to 1 so I'm gonna multiply it with the 100 since the maximum is 100 here right let's check okay seems okay now in order to have several components um, you need to have some list to manage all those components together so that I can later use that list to remove all those components so under the custom additional code I am going to add create a list call a list in order to contain contain all the have all the components inside and the class that I want to use for the list is gh underscore active object since this is the base the active object will be the base both for number sliders and the component the gh component okay so i'll name this components and new list gh active object now i am going to create another list named as reserve components with the same type uh, the reason is because in order to remove the components from the grasshopper document I have to use kind of a thread like um, stuff called a scheduled solution schedule uh, schedule solution which um, activates the code after some timing that you specify it's because the grasshopper seems to this c -sharp script seems to give an error if you try to remove the grasshopper components in the current timing you have to have some delay in order to remove the stuff from the GH document so the reserve component is needed in order to uh, consider this delay stuff okay now first thing you have so now that you have two uh, list of the GH active object what you want to do is to create a function that removes all the components which is inside uh, which is uh, which you have just created using the code inside this update condition uh, and currently it's only the slider so let's create a function called public remove all components 
and here is where you want to add a scheduled uh, solution in order to remove all the components in the right uh, timing so the first thing you want to do is to clear all the components inside the reserve components and for each use the for each to look each component inside the components list this one and then copy this component inside reserve I guess there are some copy function or copy method for list probably a clone method from one to another but I'll just do like this and <clears throat> after you have copied this component inside a components list into a reserve components list here comes where you want to activate the schedule solution and in order to use the schedule solution you need to have a GH document so I'll make a I'll have a new parameter called GH document and name it as a doc and using the doc you can call a schedule solution method and the first input first parameter will be a timing like in a millisecond how many how much later you want to call this function and then you can have the the callback inside so after, in this case, after zero millisecond uh, callback inside here will be called. If you set it to one, then after one millisecond uh, callback will be called. All right. So in this case, I'm gonna delete all the components created inside. The reserve components by I'm calling doc and remove object. and component attributes and false for the second output uh, second input okay let's check yeah I do have errors 70 line 78 line 78 public okay I have to say it public void okay another okay spell mistake 78 gh document okay another one 78 nine reserve components doesn't exist reserve components doesn't exist hmm. okay maybe another spell mistake okay that looks good now i have written the remove component function here i will 
call this before the updates so that it clears out clear 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 out all the components before adding any components here and let's see if it works okay yeah i do have to have a grasshopper document as an input okay let's check so if i turn this toggle to true the new sliders will show up and if i change the sliders the slider values it will change and if i turn this off okay nothing happens okay seems that all those sliders has been created okay something must be wrong let's check okay so what i was missing is that i do i did have created this components list but i didn't add the sliders inside this component so that's what i was missing so before adding this object since to a grasshopper document i will add this slider component inside this components list okay let's try this out check okay and let's turn this on if i change this seed the number will changes if i turn this off sliders will disappear and no duplicated sliders will be created and it's in the 100 100 position from x and y all right looks good so i have just implemented the remove components function and also have created the function to create a sliders let's create some more maybe in this uh, next time let's create some polygon component so that you can control the radius of the component using this slider value okay so let's say polygon and new and the polygon component is contained inside the cu curve components dot gha so let's go back to the rhino and what you have to, what you can do is to say new curve components and since you have added the reference to this curve components you can see some hints what kind of components it is contain inside this com curve components and what I want to use is component underscore polygon it's this one and you have just created the new uh, polygon component now what you want to do is to set some set a wires network between the sliders and the this polygon and also you want to change the segment of this polygon component that you're going to use so you have four inputs here <clears throat> what i want to do is to connect this r which is stands for radius with the generated sliders and for the s which stands for segments i want to change it to a random integer numbers without connecting to any uh, components so just setting the value like you do here so let's try that both stuff now after you have created polygon uh for uh, the very first thing you want to do is to do the same stuff as sliders it is to set the position of this component inside a canvas so whenever you want to use the attributes use create attributes and inside the attributes you have this pivot which stands for the position of the components so set some 
position for this component maybe to the right side so I'll set it to 300 100 for the Y okay now let's get into connecting actually connect how to connect the sliders and the polygon input now the first thing you want to do is to get the input of this polygon and you can access to the input by calling params and inside params there's output and input and in this case I want to access to the input and as you can see for the polygon you have four inputs first one is the plane or the place of the polygon and second radius third segments and fourth the fillet radius and I want an access to the second one and the input I can use this square bracket in order to access which one which input you want to use so the second one is one the first one is zero so I'll, I write it one as a two in order to get the second input and for the second input what I want to do is to add a network between this sliders so call after get the input call add source and just connect with slider like this so the slider itself is a parameter so you can just directly attach as a source like this okay let's check if there's any errors nope seems okay and as usual or any other components you have to add this inside this components list also to the grasshopper document in order to actually see it inside the document or canvas okay uh, check okay seems okay now let's click OK to actually see if the component will be created so if I double click this toggle the sliders and the polygon is created and the radius the second input is connected with the sliders just that I just as what I wanted okay looks good if, and if I toggle this to false the component will disappear great now let's go back and let's change a bit of the position since it was too close so I'll set it to 400 for the X and also I also want to change the segment input which is the third input of the polygon to a random integer value so let's do that next before get it uh, before add into the components list um, setting a persistent data for the input is a bit more complicated than connecting a as a wires connecting wires with the different components the first thing you have to do is to get an input as a persisting parameter class so let's call the input segment input and what you want to access is the polygon dot params dot input and this time is the third input and I wanna what I want to do is to change this class or cast this class into a special 
um, persistent parameter class. And this time, since I know that the segment input is integer, so you will you have to cast it as like this. So grasshopper dot kernel dot gh persistent. There are two parameters. The first one is geometry. Second one is without geometry persistent param. Every like value component like numbers, vectors, uh, integers will be used. The second one will be used and all the other like points, B wrap surface curves will be used. The first one will be used. This uh, this time I'm gonna use it as a uh, numbers or integers. So I will use the second one. And inside this uh, bracket, I have to set it as a grasshopper dot kernel dot types dot gh underscore integer integer okay yeah like this so this bit this is a bit a uh, long line to write but as long as you know the input of the component you just have to change this here so if it's integer it you just have to say gh dot integer if it's vectors then it's gh underscore vectors and so on and you also have to change this one if it's the value related uh, input then you have to use gh underscore persist persistent param if it's geometry related input then it's gonna be a persistent geometry params okay now after you have got the input cast it as a gh integer instance what you want to do next is to uh, clear up the de default um, segment value uh, because every time you create the polygon so you can see for the segment sometimes you have the default value being already inputted as uh, persistent data and in this case value 6 is already contained inside a segment so what you want to do first is to delete those values in order to use your own value so in order to delete that just call a persistent data dot clear data so that's the function to clear all the persistent data, uh, default persistent data. Now after that, you can add your own value. So segment input persistent data and call append and create a component, create a class instance of a gh integer this case in this case and inside this bracket you just have to type any integer numbers that you want to use it and I'll, i would like to just use a random value so i'll call next and the minimum of minimum integer number for the polygon should be 3 so I'll just say 3 the random value from 3 to say 10 all right now everything should be okay let's click this to check if there's any errors no errors okay click okay and double click this toggle and let's see the value here now I can see that this, the side of the polygon is changing depending on the random seed. So time, sometimes it's 4, 
as you can see here, four. And if I change this to different seed, sometimes it's seven. So it's the random value from the three to 10. And also the radius is all randomly changing. Okay, so far so good. Now let's delete this. Okay, so next time, uh, next thing you want to, I want to try out is to use the output of this polygon to connect it with the other components. So, so I have just explained that the, I had, I did explain that the sliders and polygon, which is a part of the GH component, is a bit different in terms of the, the object structures. So in order to connect polygon with other with another component, you have to do a bit of a bit different. You have to the way to connect is a bit different compared to the sliders. So I'll show you how. So let's say I would like to add a component called boundary surface. I'll call it boundary. And let's say new. And it's it's inside a surface component. So surface components dot. And I think it's inside this surface components namespace and let's check okay this one components boundary surface right okay now as usual as for the other components you have to set the pivot the position of this um component so I'll just copy this stuff here, lines here, paste it here, copy this to this, replace this with polygon, and set the position maybe 550 for the X. Okay, now. What you want to do for the boundary, this boundary surface, if I check the component, you just have one input and you want to just connect this with the polygon component, the first output of this component. So what you have to get is the output value of this polygon in order to connect with this boundary surface, first input. So, in order to do that, it's a bit different from sliders because for sliders you can you could just uh, add it as it is uh, at, for the source like this at source sliders. But all the other components like polygon or circle or rectangle, any other components have multiple outputs. So you have to specify which output you want to use in order to connect. So I'll show you how you can do that. For the boundaries, boundary dot params dot input, the first input, add source. So you want to connect with the polygons first output. So in order to that you have you can call it like this polygon dot params dot output first one. So this is how you can connect between two different components, two different GH components other than sliders. Okay. Now do the same thing to add it inside a components list and grasshopper documents. 
So copy this, replace it with polygon. Polygon like this. Okay, let's check. No errors. Okay, let's delete this. And double click this toggle. And you have successfully connected this polygon output with the boundary input. Nice. Right. Now, finally, I want to connect this boundary component with the geometry parameter, this one. And this geometry parameter, this is yet another type of component, which is not a GH component like these boundary surface or polygon, but it is more close to the slider values, which is a special input. So I'll show you how you can call this special parameter uh, using the through a code. Okay, let's delete this. And the parameter is also contained as a slider. Uh, same as the sliders, it is contained inside a Grasshopper DLL. So you can add it like this new grasshopper dot kernel dot and not it's not inside a special namespace, but it's inside the parameters namespace. And dot there is a param geometry. So this is the one that you want to use in order to create the parameter that you have just seen, the geometry parameter. Okay. The other one, the all the later stuff is pretty much the same as the other component. You first you need to set the position, so I'll just copy this lines, two lines here. Replace the sliders with geom and set the positions for the, this geometry parameter. Now the last one was 550, so I'll say 700. Okay. Now also add this components inside the components list. So geom components dot add geom and also add this to the grasshopper document. Right now check click OK and double click the toggle. Okay I didn't create the the source. Yeah I didn't set up the wire network wire connections I forgot about it okay so for the geometry for the geom parameters it's pretty much the same as the uh, other components you just call add source and the last one was boundary so boundary dot params dot output the first output okay check again looks okay double click and everything seems good now the next thing I would like to try out is by changing the random seed Maybe sometimes you want to change the totally change the component network itself. Like maybe sometimes you don't you want to skip having this boundary surface at some point at some random uh, conditions. So I'll, let me try that. Uh, sometimes you have boundary surface component attached to the polygon. Sometimes not. Just connect this polygon directly to the geometry parameters like this. So let's create that condition. Right, so in order to do that, I'll make a random conditions here. So if rand 
next double is less than 0.5 so 50% it will be created but other 50% it will not be created now the problem is that um, this last geometry parameter is trying to connect with the boundaries and if the boundary is not created then we'll lose the place to connect so what I want to do here is to instead of writing like this I know that the last components the last component inserted inside this components list is the one that you want to connect with this geometry network geometry parameters so I can just say like this components the last components dot params dot output zero okay now I also have to cast this components as a GH components since if this components is sliders or a geometry uh, parameter or any other special component which is different from polygon or boundary surfaces it's actually is not a GH component which doesn't have a property called param so you have to cast this specifically cast this as a gh component like this and that way you know that this one will be a gh component cast it as a gh component which should have a params property and should have an output property after that so let's check that looks good click OK and say here now in this case it doesn't have a boundary surface but if I change this random seed sometimes it appears sometimes not so that's what I wanted to have and looks good okay now everything looks good in terms of the network the last thing I would like to try out is to save this component network that I have just created to a different grasshopper file um, so let's do that okay so let's delete that first so after adding all those uh, components into the grasshopper document and components list I am going to create a another condition call if save is clicked so if the save button is clicked I would like to create a new document call save doc as a GH document and look through each component inside the components list and for each component inside a component Okay, I am missing a bar here. And save doc dot add object component. Now, after you have uh, added all the components inside this virtual GH document, what you want to do next is to call bar doc io create a 
gh document io class using this save doc that you have just created and finally call save as right now I do think you also need to use the this schedule solutions for the saving as well because without it you think you will have duplicated components created inside a doc uh, newly created grasshopper document so let's call that as well so I'll inside a save grasshopper document oops, don't need a dot document dot schedule solution zero val Okay, something like this. Okay, I think it looks good. If I change, okay, there's some errors here. Grasshopper document doesn't exist inside a context 98. Really? Okay, grass hopper. Document. Okay, I think I had some spell mistake. And ninety nine, the grasshopper dot kernel dot gh document is used as a variable. 99 Okay, I was missing new Okay, another one Okay, I'm missing a second parameter for this one so I'll have to say false for the second parameter here and final errors 103 for, Okay, I was missing a, another new here Right, looks good. Now let's try that out. Let's close this and double click the toggle, change some values here. And if I click this button, save, the display, the save dialog will appear. So let's try to save this inside maybe here and call it sample 2 now let's check by opening the sample 2 file that I've just created and I do seem to have some duplicated stuff here so something must be wrong okay let's go back Double click to turn this off. Now let's go back and check again. Okay, so it seems like some components are still left inside the components list, which I needed to remove it, I think. So what I was missing is this one. So I have to remove a unnecessary component which has been removed from the grasshopper file grasshopper document like this then after all the schedule has been after all the components has been deleted from the grasshopper file I will clear the reserve components like this 
Now check. Seems okay. Click OK. And let's try it again. Double click this toggle. Set some parameter here. And click this save. And override this sample too. Let's see, open this sample to file again to check if the file has been created and seems there's no duplicated duplication and you can see that it successfully saved the component network that's being auto automatically generated using the C-sharp script. Cool. So it's the same as this one. Now, everything that I wanted to show you is pretty much done. The final, the final last thing that I would like to show you is to how you can output the final result through this component's output A as a geometry. Now, right now, this doesn't have any geometry inserted here. Uh, I'll put it, but you can actually link the final output through this output of the C Shep component that you are using right now. So that's the final thing I would like to show you. So let's clear this out by toggling it uh, off false. And let's double click. And in order to do that, the first thing you need to do is to collect the data for the final geometry that you want to output. So after adding the geom parameter to the grasshopper document, what I want to do is to call collect data method for the geometry parameter which can also be called for the polygon or boundary surfaces and after collecting the data you can output the data call inside a vol volatile data so geom dot volatile data dot all data so you just export all the datas and I think I need to uh, set some parameters for the all data so if whether I would like to skip the null and let's say yes okay so that's it uh, check click OK and double click the toggle, change the parameter here. And even if I hide this, the geometry is sh still shown is because the final geometry output is being outputted from the A output here as a geometry. Like this. So in order to check what's the output, what's the final output, then you can use this kind of technique as well. Cool. So that's about it. Uh, that's what I wanted to show you here, how you can create the network of components automatically using the C-Shop script and how you can say to file the virtual grasshopper file into a different graph of the file. So I hope you find it interesting. I'm not I am not sure if this is useful for but in my case it's pretty interesting like technique. There must be a way and uh, there must be some situations this technique could be useful. And I hope somebody would find it useful in their own cases. Okay. 
Uh, that's it for today. Uh, thank you.